Hello there and welcome to Methuen Community Studios as we present coverage of election 2023. This is the Central District Council Candidates Forum. I'm Seth Graham. Thanks so much for joining us. Over the next hour, you will have the opportunity to meet some of the candidates that will be appearing on Tuesday, November 7th ballot when you have the chance to go vote. Now, local elections are what impacts you the most. They set your tax rate. They deal with trash and recycling collection, plowing streets and making sure that when you call for help there is someone there to answer on the other line this is what it's all about and listen over the next hour to the to the questions and to the answers and to the opportunity to meet some people who care about this community and want to do their best to make a difference. Let's take a moment now to meet the candidates. Now, uh, there are four candidates who will be appearing on the ballot. Two of them are with us during this forum. Now, we'll say that we do make multiple attempts to reach out to all of the candidates who run for office here in Methuen. These were the two who were able to join us for this program. And we do have a statement from one of the candidates that I will read into the record uh, during this program. With that said, let's meet two of the four candidates that you'll see on the upcoming ballot. They are Joyce Campagnon and incumbent Joel Ferretra. Thank you for having us, Seth. Welcome. Thank you. And the other two candidates that you will see on Tuesday, November 11th are Derek Tony Jones and Sharon Birchall. Now, uh, the rules for this forum, pretty simple. Uh, I'll be asking them a series of questions. The candidates haven't seen the questions. They come from you, the viewers, and the editorial team here at MCS. Each candidate will have an opportunity to be the first up. Their responses will be timed, and they'll all receive equal time to respond to the questions. And if time allows, we will go back and forth, allow for some uh, back and forth discussion as needed. We ask the candidates to attack the issues and not each other. I'm the moderator. I can cut people off if uh, they cross the line, but that doesn't happen here. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to get started. Um, the candidates each have a prepared opening statement. Uh, you will each have uh, one minute to provide that to the viewers right now, and we will begin with Joyce. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to thank MCTV for hosting this forum this evening. As many of you know, I am Joyce Campagnon, and I am a candidate for the Central District Council. I bring dec decades of experience to the council. I feel public service is the greatest way to give back to the community. After taking a few years off, I truly miss serving the residents and want to come back so I can continue to advocate for you. I have served our community on the Youth Commission as East District Counselor, as your Central District Counselor, as at-large counselor, and on the Methuen School Committee. The Central District is the heart of the city and has most of our historical buildings, such as the Searles Building, which I was on the council when we made the decision to purchase it back and make it our city hall. We have the beautiful Nevins Library in the Methuen Music Hall, just to name a few. I will work with the newly elected council to ensure that the ABBA funding is spent according to what the mayor and the prior council approved as eligible projects. Some of these projects are in the central district. The Granite Street Water Pumping Station Re Rehabilitation Project, Lowell Street Shirley Ave Drainage System Project, the Arlington Neighborhood Combined Sewer Removal Project. If elected, I will continue with my promise to serve the residents of the Central District, excuse me, as a Central District. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. And a correction to both candidates, a two-minute opening statement, uh, not a one-minute. We did account for that um, during the timing. Uh, now, Joyce is first on the ballot. The, uh, the next candidate in between Joel will be Derek Tony Jones. I do have a prepared statement from him that we received, so uh, I will share this with you now, and then we'll keep going from there. 
So this is from uh, Derek Tony Jones. My name is Derek Tony Jones, candidate for Central District. Let me take this opportunity afforded to me to thank all candidates for their courage to participate in public service by seeking to be part of Methuen City Government. Let me also thank the moderator in Salute MCS for hosting this series of candidates forums. But most importantly, many thanks to residents of Central District for your willingness to preserve democracy by exercising the franchise come November 7th. As a resident of Central District for the last 21 years, I am quite familiar with the many socio-cultural and economic challenges we collectively face in our neighborhoods. These vexing issues are always expected to be solved by an administrative body, which is charged with enacting resolutions, ordinances, and general functionality of city government. This group of capable and dedicated individuals is elected by you, the people, every two years. Hence, on Tuesday, November 7th, 2023, residents across the city, including voters of Central District, will exercise their civic duties in this regard. Your choice of candidates will be based on an evaluation of their performances and discerned abilities during months of door-to-door -door campaigning. I believe that a city is best managed and most effective when emphasis is placed on accessibility, responsiveness, and more conducive to citizens and entrepreneurs. I pledge to work hard at finding solutions and improving the quality of life for all citizens. I am a proven leader with a plausible and visionary platform to further develop our district and by extension, the city of Methuen. When I elected, I planned to focus on issues such as public safety, seniors, youth affairs, tax reduction, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, cultural diversity, health concerns, and environmental protection. As your counselor, I want to develop the abilities or our youth by providing them with the appropriate tools and training for them to compete successfully in a rapidly changing world. I will also fight to enforce all city ordinances to protect citizens and maintain a high quality of life across the city. I want to make Methuen a city where protecting the environment is a way of life by encouraging recycling, increasing green space to more than 8% of our land base. Concomitantly, I fully embrace the notion that climate change resilience initiatives must include a comprehensive approach, including strategies to A, transition toward renewable energy sources, and B, prepare the entire city for more extreme weather and other climate change effects. Last year, after decades of social and political activism, I received the President Award for Volunteer Service. I am a proven leader with a record of accomplishments working with numerous nonprofit organizations. Currently, I am Executive Director of the Center of Social Justice and Development, Inc., former Chairman of the National Unity Commission, which was tasked to investigate impediments to racial unity. I am a graduate of UMass Boston and Concordia University in Montreal, Canada, and happily married with two daughters, both graduates of Methuen High School. It will be an honor and privilege to serve your counselor, but equally important is my commitment to respect the values shared by residents of Central District. I ask for your vote on Election Day, Tuesday, November 7th, 2023. Thank you, and that is the pre-written, um, prepared statement sent to us by Derek Tony Jones. We'll now continue on with the opening statements for the candidates uh, here with us at MCS, and we will pick up now with Joel Ferretra. Joel? Thank you, Seth. And I want to thank Joyce Campagnon for joining us tonight, and thank you, Methuen Community Studios, for hosting this event. Four years ago, I sat here and led off by telling you I wasn't a politician. I was just a regular citizen who, who stepped up, who wanted to help the city of Methuen. And I can say four years later, I'm still that same person. I'm here to fight for the everyday person in Methuen, not, not the people with those connections. And I feel like my track red, record proves that. My methods have met, uh, probably not what you're used to seeing in a, in a politician, but the results prove that I can, I'm able to get that done. My track record has been, I'm proud of my track record over the last few years. Some of those things have been the Methuen Police Department. We started when I came on board in 2020. We were in the midst of scandal after scandal, and we we're finally seeing the fruits of that labor over four years with the recent indictments of our former chief and former officers. Um, I've been one of the more fiscally responsible councils over the last four years, been leading when it comes to budget time, more cuts than my other fellow councilors. And I'm out there trying to attract unique businesses to come to the city of Methuen. Over the last couple of months, I've been out there not just saying it, but doing it, trying to get a couple of new breweries to come into the city of Methuen. I've been a supporter of our veterans and our, and our seniors. Um, I've founded the Veterans Affairs Subcommittee for the City Council, bringing the city councilors, 
the Veterans Affairs Committee and some of our veterans groups all to the table so we can address those needs of our veterans in the community. We've also passed legislation to help our veterans at home when it comes to tax breaks and being able to put their properties into a trust so therefore to protect their property as, as they get older and also help our seniors. Um, this upcoming Monday on October 16th, I am a co-sponsor of two resolutions that, to bring more tax breaks to the seniors of Methuen that will provide more relief to help our seniors stay in our community and stay in their homes that they have been here for decades. So I'm hoping on November 7th that the Central District will give me their vote and allow me to finish what I started four years ago. All right, candidates, thanks so much. We're gonna get started now with the questions. Joel, you'll be first up on this one and you'll each have two minutes. Two minutes will be your time throughout uh, this program here. When I say the phrase city infrastructure, what do you think of? So I, the first thing that popped into my mind was I look at downtown was the first thing. So I look at downtown and then I think of our roads because that's, those are the first two things that popped into my mind. So when you ask people about what are the, when you knock on doors, those are, the, when, those are the things that people are more concerned about, mostly roads, you know, because that's what people travel on every day. And that's what people are most, you know, when, when you talk about their taxes, those are the things that people see. So those are the biggest things that I think we need to improve on as a city is be able to improve, improve our roads, use our Chapter 90 money, and be creative with our, with our reserves. We have been, this council has been very good when it comes to st being able to improve our free cash stabilization. We're probably close to $20 million now in, in our free cash. We just approved our capital improvement plan to put $4 million a year over the next four years to improve our roads and sidewalks. So I think we're getting, we're going to start getting, not ahead, but at least start catching up to our neighbors when it comes to improving our roads. And I think in our master plan, the Methuen 2035, we'll start attacking some of those problems when it comes to having a livelier downtown where people can come, shop, eat, and be that livelier place when you go to some of our neighboring communities that have those places. Right. Thank you. Joyce? Yes. I would agree with uh, Councilor uh, Ferreira. Keeping uh, the upkeep of our buildings and our roads uh, so that they're not in deplorable uh, condition, and to keep uh, you know uh, the infrastructure on these buildings up up to par, so that we're not falling behind, and then ha having to uh, spend uh, massive money to uh, renovate or to, you know, to, to keep them up to uh, the potential. So I, I would echo what my uh, colleague is saying. So <laughs> not colleague, I'm sorry, no. but candidate. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both. Uh, we'll move on to our, to our next question now. Uh, Joyce, you'll be first up on this one. Uh, we ask this every, uh, every election cycle during the forums to, to please take the, the next minute or so or two uh, to tell us if you have any relatives working in the city, whether it be part-time entry level up to a department head, uh, or if any relatives work for companies who sell services to the city. I do not. I can honestly look out into the cameras and say, I do not have any relatives that work for the city of Methuen or for any vendors. Uh, I, I am not uh, privy if I have some long lost relative, but I do not, to my knowledge, have anyone working for the city of Methuen at this time. Thank you. Joel? So my wife, Heather, who's in the audience tonight, is a special <laughs> education teacher for, for Methuen Public School. She's been a special education teacher for 20 years. Um, that does not preclude me from voting on any budget or anything, according to the State Ethics Commission, because as a Methuen City Councilor, you vote on the, on, the city, on the school department budget as a whole. You are not allowed to go line by line when it comes to Methuen City, when it comes to the school budget. So her being a teacher, 
does not be, preclude me from anything, and I am proud to be the husband of a Methuen school teacher. Um, my three children, I have two in college, a sophomore at Simmons who's pursuing nursing, a senior at Western New England pursuing mechanical engineering, so there's no conflicts there. And my oldest daughter just graduated with a doctorate in, in pharmacy, so she is doing her residency up at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Hospital in Lebanon, New Hampshire, so there's no conflicts there. Good candidates, thank you. Uh, moving on to our next question, Jill, you're first up on this one. Um, with an excess of millions of dollars now in the city's treasury, we touched on this um, earlier on the program already, how do you feel that money should be used? And now with the city no longer under state financial oversight, would you envision any changes to the role of, of the CAFO for the city? So I feel like we're in the position we are due to the CAFO. I think her, her strong financial background is very helpful in why we're in a, a position we are. She's one in, integral piece of city government. I am a strong supporter of keeping that position now that we are out of fiscal oversight from the state. Um, I also now we're in a f strong financial situation that I'd like to see us using that money to do some other things. Something I'm working on right now with the mayor and the CAFO is using some of our meals tax money. Right now, every quarter, about $300,000 a year of our meals tax money goes into, stable, into our stabilization fund, which is about, right now, around $5 million. Um, I'm on the mental health task force, which is headed by the mayor and all different department heads in the city, and we are looking to take a portion of that meals tax money, possibly, and put that into a fund to help support different mental health initiatives throughout the city. It is a pandemic. It is, it is rampant in this city right now, and there's many things that we need to do to help address that. And by going this route, this is something we can do to support our citizens and our first responders without hitting the bottom line of the budget. So this is something I'm looking to do now, now that we're in a much better um, spot financially than we have been in the past. Thank you. Yeah. Joyce? Yes. Well, I want to be sure that we have um, our uh, like police and fire school department, everyone has what they need to uh, uh, do their everyday uh, business and also to let the uh, residents and the taxpayers of Methuen get some relief also. So everyone gets a little bit of the taste of uh, some relief. And uh, just if we could do it equally and do not, uh, we don't want to spend e every dollar we have because you don't know what's going to happen down the road. So I just think taking uh, baby steps before we do the uh, uh, large steps uh, and just take it easy and uh, make sure we know where every dollar is going and, and also make sure that the taxpayers get their fair share also. Candidates, thank you. Uh, moving on to our next question, I, I love this one. Every great city deserves a great downtown, right? Um, and Joyce, you'll be first up on this one. Um, every great city deserves a great downtown. And if you could, if we're up to you, what would be your vision for revitalizing the downtown and how would you make it happen? Well, for the years that I've been a resident here in Methuen and also on the council, the big um, complaint that you hear is the parking. And I think uh, Councilor uh, Ferretra would probably ag agree with that. And I think most of the uh, councilors and city officials would agree with that about the parking. And that's always been an issue. And um, to make the um, res the restaurants and uh, stores uh, accessible, so to increase the the parking availability, I think would help the businesses a great deal in the downtown area. There's always room for improvement. None of us are perfect, so uh, I think working together, uh, we could make a difference uh, down there and. Uh, the downtown area. Great. Thank you. Joel? In a perfect world, my envision would be, obviously, parking's a main issue. And, you know, I, I think there's some land available around downtown that we could 
help address that. But in, in a perfect world, what I would like to see done is make Hampshire Street kind of a one way from from the low, from that intersection near Le Bon Dior to Broadway. So that now 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 the street doesn't need to be as wide. So now that allows your your restaurants that are on that street maybe you have maybe you have sidewalk seating now. Maybe that allows that to be a little bit more wider. Now you, now it maybe attracts a different a couple more businesses there. You, now you can do some more improvements. Obviously you have to work with the historic commission. There's a, there's a lot of moving parts there. But I feel like if you're able to make some slight improvements to attract people there, if it's more, if it's more walkable, if it's you know, if you have, if you bring make a couple more tweaks to that area, that makes it a little more attractive to other people. I also think when people think downtown, they just think of that one strip of Hampshire Road, where I think you can extend that more. I think if you go, if you extend that down Broadway a little bit more, where you have Dick's TV appliance, you have an empty lot there. You, I think you can extend that more and you could try to get more unique businesses in. You have a couple of food trucks, you know, you go to Middleton, they have this great lot where you have different food trucks and different types of vendors. There's many things you can do and I, I have tons of ideas, but it'd be interesting. I, it'd be a great, I, it'd be a great project I'd love to be involved in. Great. Thank you, Ken. It's fun to dream, isn't it? Oh, it love is. It. <laughs> um, let's, um, let's move on to, to talking about some other, other ways and other projects to fund. And that would be about a, a new public safety center. Uh, Joel, you're first up on this one. What would be your opinion on, on whether or not a, a public safety center should be constructed? And if so, where would you put it? 100% needs to be done. Um, over the last four years, I've seen us having to order fire trucks that need to be custom made because they don't fit in stations. Um, ideally, they need to be you know, a location needs to be found that's central, so that way any, pub, any first responder vehicle could get easily on and off to 93 or 495 or 213. Um, so finding the land is gonna be the most difficult piece, but I think having one public safety complex with police and fire, and depending on the size of the land, even possibly some DPW in that as well, where if you have mechanics on site with police and fire, if you have a vehicle go down, now you have DPW on site as well that can help address some of those issues. So it's a definite need. It's something that I would look to do as part of my last term if, if I'm lucky enough to be elected to help set the groundwork. I know a couple of my counselors now are really pushing to have a new TPW building built on the east end. I'd really like to see us lay the groundwork for a new public safety building to be built within the next decade in the city of Methuen. Thank you. Joyce? Well, not to keep echoing, but I do, I agree with Councilor Ferretra. Uh, it's something that's a long overdue and uh, we do need it badly. And uh, I think that it's time that we put the uh, best foot forward and uh, make it happen, work together and bring it to light. The residents of the uh, city uh, deserve it and uh, and they need it so uh, I would be a strong supporter in uh, having uh, Councilor Ferretra move forward with this project. All right thank you both uh, moving on to our next question Joyce you'll be first up I want to stay on the topic of public safety and ask you what is your opinion of the current size of the police and fire force here in the city? I think it has to grow with the residents' growth in the community. I don't think you can ever have too many policemen or too many firemen. Uh, you're talking about uh, people's sa uh, public safety, their health, their well, you know, their well-being for their families and all. So, it's uh, you never could have too many. So I would if. The, uh, if the funding is there and um, the need is there, I would say that it's something we have to uh, make happen in the near f uh, future. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Seth. So in the last, over the last two plus years since Chief McNamara has come on the police department, we've done a full reorganization where we've added, not, we've added um, patrolmen, we've added sergeants, 
and we've added lieutenants, but we've lessened the amount of captains. So what we've seen is the police department become less top heavy in adding, adding those actual officers that are making an impact on the day to day, you know, services that are more needed. You know, we're seeing a lot more community policing. Would we all love more, to have more officers? Absolutely. But we need to be mindful of our budget and make sure we do a gradual increase instead of just blowing up and adding 20 officers a year. Um, we added a couple more this year, and I think we're going to gradually increase that as we go. Um, same with the fire department. There was talk of adding four more fire, firefighters this year. That's on hold right now, but we're looking to add a third ambulance in the near future um, to help out with um, calls because right now our ambulances are being sent out of, out of our city to help out um, with our neighbors when it comes to support. So we're looking at our finances to see if we're going to be able to bring on four more firefighters to bring on that third ambulance. So it's something we definitely need, but we also need to be fiscally responsible and not, not add too many too fast and pass that burden onto the taxpayers where we lose other services at the same time. Okay. Candidates, thank you so much. Uh, we're reaching the halfway point of our forum, but before we take a quick break, I just want to talk to you for a moment and uh, tell you why it is important to vote. Now, you're learning uh, all about the, the important uh, positions on the important issues here in the city from these two candidates. Your opportunity to make your voice heard will come up on Tuesday, November 7th. Now, a couple things I want you to keep in mind. October 28th is the last day to register to vote here in the city. If you want to find out how you can register, the website to keep in mind is methuen.gov, where you can then find the city clerk's office, and we'll, we'll have a more uh, detailed link for you coming up in just a bit. Put on your calendar, because if the 7th isn't doable for you to show up and vote, you've got more opportunities. It's called early voting. It starts Monday, October the 30th, it goes through that Friday. So Monday, October 30th through Thursday, November uh, the 2nd is 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. That's at City Hall at the Customer Service Center. And then on that Friday, November the 3rd, they'll close a little bit early. It'll be from 8 to 12. So you have plenty of opportunities to vote, whether it be early, whether it be by absentee ballot, or on Election Day, which again is Tuesday, November 7th. Now, we want you to stay with us. We have more questions ahead for the Central District Council Forum here from Methuen Community Studios. Please stay tuned. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I, that no, was. No, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. They call me Prince like I'm royalty or something. But the places I've lived ain't no palaces. So I don't need grilled salmon or a new scratching post. Just give me a cardboard box and a can of tuna and we're good. You can even change my name. I'm cool being the kitty formerly known as Prince. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Thanks for sticking with us. 
here on Methuen Community Studios for the Central District Councilor Candidates Forum. These are the people that you will see on the ballot on Tuesday, November the 7th. Now, there are two seats for the Central District. You will see four names on the ballot. Two of those four candidates are with us for the forum right now here at MCS. Now, uh, just a, a quick reiteration of, of how we operate here. All candidates receive uh, invitations and multiple attempts for, for contact. Um, and so uh, everyone gets a fair shot here at MCS. Uh, but uh, we're, we're joined back now with the two candidates who are here with us in studio today. And those are Joyce Campagnon and the incumbent, Joel Ferretra. So thanks for, thanks, thanks for sticking with us. No thanks so <laughs> for answering much your again questions. For Thank you for Absolutely. having us. Thank you so much. So let's, um, let's dive back in and uh, let's, let's talk more about what we want to do. Well, what either the two of you want to do. I just sit here and ask questions. Uh, Jill, you're going to be first up on this. Sounds Again, good. each candidate has two minutes, up to two minutes. Um, use it as you wish. A question is a little open-ended here. What do you feel is Methuen's biggest unaddressed challenge, and how would you tackle it? Oh. So I think we touched on it earlier. I think it's... a. Oh, there's so many. I really think it's the it's the basics. I really feel like we've let a lot of our basic things kind of slide. We, we do a lot of projects. You know, we'll, we'll we'll redo a road. We'll we'll redo a park. We and then we don't do any preventative maintenance. We don't do any upkeep, and we just let it slide. Where instead of if we do an, if we redo a road or if we do redo a park, and if we just do them the minimum of just up doing the upkeep it doesn't fall apart so i really feel like we need to start coming up with better plans on just taking care of what we have and when we make those investments into our roads our bridges our fields that we maintain them so that way they last longer and our citizens have the ability to use these facilities and they and they last longer and that and what that does is that saves us money in the long run because when you take care of a facility it's going to last longer instead of having to put more money into it when it's just neglected. Thank you. Yeah. Joyce? Okay. Uh, I would say by not uh, doing the uh, putting a band aid on it, but to get to the core of the problem and start from the bottom up and uh, make sure that uh, it's fully structured and uh, enforcement. It is uh, greatly needed and important. So to uh, enforce, reinforce on the structures is most important. Thank you. Uh, moving on to our next question, and it's, it's keeping in the same theme here about what may be unaddressed in the city. Presumably you've, you've been to another city or town at some point. Um, Joyce, you're first up on this one. What is a, a public service or a municipal service, you know, whether it be like some cities have compost collection, for example. Uh, that's just an example, but a, a public service that you've seen elsewhere that you think you would like to bring here to the city of Methuen? And that's a stumper. <laughs> <laughs> I think Methuen uh, has done very well as far as bringing in, you know, uh, things to our, our residents. Um, there's always room for improvement, and if I think we're opened, if there's something out there that we're missing, we should be open to it and, uh, you know, investigate it. And, um, see where it would fit into our community. Just because it fits into, uh, you know, another community doesn't mean it's going to fit well in our community. Uh, so I, I, I just think it's something we have to look at and uh, bring to the table and have the counselors, uh, you know, study and see if it's feasible for our community. Thank you. Joel? Yes, with the, with the purchase of two, uh, one brand new Packer truck from DPW and a second on the way, I'd like to see us start doing Christmas tree pickup curbside 
right now you can bring your Christmas tree to like Nicholson Stadium parking lot and dump it there. What I'd like to see us do for the month of January is allow our citizens to put their Christmas trees on the curbside when on their recycling weeks and have DPW go up and pick that up. I think it's a service that is other communities do and with us having now a truck in-house that I think that's a service that we could provide to our citizens of Methuen at very low cost that would be a bit that I think the citizens of Methuen would like. I feel like a lot of communities, Methuen included, feel like that they as the years go on, we lose services as citizens. It would be nice to finally gain uh, to give services back. So I'd, I'd like to see us explore Christmas tree pickup coming for starting in January 24. Candidates, thank you so much. Um, moving on to our next question now, Jill, you'll be first up on this one. Um, significant number of older residents want to stay here in the city of Methuen, but public housing is strained, uh, the inventory is strained, and they may be economically forced to downsize as a result. Uh, how would you propose adding additional affordable housing for the city's senior population? So I think it's, you know, it's always tough when you look at you know dipping into the private sector and how you do that but i think you know one piece is making sure that when housing communities come in when a project comes in that we don't allow them to pay to get out of the affordable housing piece we've seen that in the past where in previous administrations that like a toll brothers or other other builders would come in and then be able to pay out of the 40b piece where they'd be able to say hey we'll just write you a check and now we don't have to have a portion of our units be affordable um, also with some legislation where that's coming forth in october we're bringing some tax breaks and incentives to our seniors to help them with those tax bills to help them stay in their homes i think having more affordable housing is nice but i think helping the seniors stay in their homes that they've been in for 30 or 40 or 50 years is more important you know they've raised their families there they've had christmases there they've had thanksgivings there and they, they don't want to move if they don't have to so one of the things that we're bringing back, we're bringing up this week is a tax break where if you volunteer a certain amount of hours in the city, whether it's at City Hall or the Senior Center, you're going to be able to get money off of your tax bill. So I'd like us to be able to work with our citizens to give them tax breaks to help out the city as compared to trying to find more housing. But it's, a, it's definitely a, a multi-pronged approach to solving that issue. Thank you. Yep. Joyce? I think that's a very welcoming uh, issue coming up because the, uh, the seniors in our community do want to stay in their homes and in the community where they've lived for 25, 30, 40 years. And uh, I think it's uh, really privy on our part to uh, have our seniors stay here in, uh, in affordable housing. And so many times uh, we have uh, contractors, uh, builders come in and they're going to, uh, you know, have the low income housing in that. And then they end up with just maybe five or six um, apartments and the rest of them are the high, high quality, you know, higher end, like 500,000, 400,000. And a lot of our seniors cannot afford that. so. I would uh, absolutely uh, support bringing uh, some housing in for our seniors so they can afford uh, to stay here in a community that they've uh, brought up their children and uh, maintained uh, their probably uh, most of their married life. So I would definitely like to see some projects coming in to help our seniors. Thank you both. Moving on to our next question. Joyce, you'll be first up. A complete total other end of the spectrum here <laughs> with this question. What do you think of the proposal for a youth center at Ditson Place? Well, I was on the youth center committee for a hundred years, not a hundred years, <laughs> but many, many years. And um, to put a youth center in, it, I really think we have to be careful where we put this because we need safety for the children that will be attending and uh, we have to think of the neighbors uh, that will, would be surrounding the youth center uh, building. 
per se. So I think it's something that um, the city officials uh, would have to sit down and put their thinking caps on and really, uh, you know, uh, study the different uh, neighborhoods where we uh, would think and would hope that a youth center would fit in without uh, disrupting, you know, the seniors uh, or any other um, businesses in the area. So I, it's a very touchy situation. And like I said, I was on the youth center committee um, many moons ago, and um, it's just, it's a very hard project to get off the ground. Thank you. Joel? Um, thank you. So I've been involved um, for over a decade in multiple youth organizations, including the Methuen Athletic Improvement Committee that was starting to look at a youth center probably about five years ago. Um, originally, this project was slated to go at the Pleasant Valley School, and that school needs over $3 million worth of um, improvements. It pretty much would need to be bulldozed and rebuilt. Um, I think Ditson Place is the absolute perfect spot. It was already a school. It's, it's set up in, with classrooms. They work in cafeteria, a gym. Um, right now, central administration, which was in there previously, is now at the new building at Branch Street, which this council approved. Um, this is a project that is well overdue for the, city, for the city of Methuen and the youth of Methuen. And I am 100% in favor. Ditson Place is in a central location that would allow students from all over the city to get to public transportation wise. Um, I'm sure we could work with busing and all of that when it came with tr working with our busing, but um, I think this is the most ready, ma ready made building that we could find in the city for this project if we are gonna have this project go forward. All right, candidates, thank you. Uh, moving on to our next question, Joel, you'll be first up on this one. Uh, as a city representative, what's your role in communicating with our neighbors? Salem, Lawrence, Andover, et cetera. Um, so myself as a city councilor, I don't have much communication with our neighbors, except, uh, but I do visit a lot and, you know, I do frequent a lot of those businesses and what I like to do is bring those ideas back. You know, you mentioned earlier about downtown and things you'd like to see. And when I go to different, when I go to those surrounding areas, if I see something I like, I'm going to bring that idea back. Like if you go to Tuscan Village, you see what they've done there, and now you go, you see, all right, can we do something like that at the Loop? So there's not a lot of communication for myself as a city councilor with, with our surrounding towns, but I definitely see what our, what our neighbors are doing. And when I see an idea that works, I definitely want to see if we can replicate that to bring that here, because the last thing we want to do is have citizens of, our citizens of Methuen going to our neighbors constantly and spending their disposable income in there. We want to see citizens of Salem, Lawrence, Andover come to Methuen and, and spend that disposable income here to help us out. So, Thank you. Yeah. Joyce? I would say, I hate to keep saying I, I, I echo what uh, what Councilor Favet is saying, but he's absolutely right. We need to uh, bring forward into our community uh, things that w would be feasible for our residents and for our community. So it's all, you know, uh, taking an idea and bringing it home, uh, there's always going to be controversy on it. But we just have to uh, move forward and what's best for the community and, and make it happen. Let me ask just a couple of, um, a couple of questions here as we uh, make our way to the, to the top of the hour now. Um, Joyce, you're first up on this. How can a city councilor help bring more business into the city of Methuen? Um, being open-minded, uh, going in, investigate, not investigating, but just visiting different communities. Uh, in the newspaper, you, you know, with new businesses coming about, and uh, 
going, um, bringing different ideas to the table and being very supportive as far as uh, making it work in our community and making it feasible for our community. Thank you. Joel? I don't know if that makes no. sense. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a couple of things you could do. As a, you know, as, as a city council, we passed legislation recently, um, a couple of pieces. One would be, was Munis, which was um, software that is going to make the, the um, permitting process a lot easier. We call it business in a day. So it's going to allow businesses to be able to streamline what they're going to need to do in order to get online quicker. Um, myself, as just personally, if I see a business out there that's maybe looking for a home, I'll reach out. So for an example, today I, was, I had a me meeting with the mayor, with economic development, Jack Wilson, and with the city clerk because there's a brewery that is building a, they call it a tiny pub. It's like an 18 seat pub that's on wheels and they're looking for a place to have a semi-permanent home during the winter. So we're trying to see if we can attract them to come to Methuen. Methuen doesn't have a brewery. So being, just being on the lookout for different businesses that are looking there and just reaching out and, you know, and just trying to say, hey, you know, we'd love to have you here in Methuen and just try to put them in contact with the right people and have them come here. Because I think there is a thirst for certain businesses here that are lacking. And as a city councilor and just as a city in general, we need to be more welcoming to those businesses and just make sure that we direct them in the right places if they do want to make their home here. And the last question for, for this forum, Joel, you're first up. It's kind of a similar question, turned around a little bit. Um, what can a city councilor do to make Methuen more family friendly? So I think it's, you know, so green space, parks, th you know, things like that. So making improvements. So when a family wants to go out, you know, our parks are in much better condition than, you know, they have been in the past and continue to make those improvements. Right now, um, Gill Ave Park is be being renovated. We're, having a dog, we're adding a dog park there. There's the splash pad's been added there. So I think that's one piece. Obviously, when you come in a family friendly, you know, you look at keeping our tax rates low so that when, when a family is looking to buy a home, that that's attractive. I think keeping our schools, you know, attractive as well when it comes to, you know, testing and class sizes, that's important when it comes to families. And then just pe being safe. Right. I think that's the biggest thing when, you know, if you're looking to raise a family, you want to be in a safe community. So making sure our first uh, public safety, police, fire, uh, DPW departments are adequately staffed, supported, and that our streets, when you walk around your neighborhood, that you feel that you can walk around your neighborhood safely with your family. So Thank you. Yeah. Joyce? Well, I will echo as far as making our streets say, uh, safer than that. And, uh, making available um, to all uh, age groups in our community. And uh, this being a blue-collar blue community, uh, we need to make it affordable for our families that are raising their children here and for the seniors who have raised their children here and they've moved on. So I, I think it's... Uh, a well-rounded community, and we need to uh, make sure that uh, all age groups uh, are being offered something within the community to make them stay here and be happy. <laughs> Thank you so much, candidates. And we're at the time now uh, to, to close up for, for our program and, uh, and, and to make your final pitch uh, to the voters, your closing statements. Um, so, Joel, you'll be first up on this one. We flip okay. it around from, from the opening. Um, you'll each have two minutes, and you can address the camera directly and uh, say right. whatever you would like to say. All right. I, won't need your, I won't need two minutes. So um, <laughs> I'm just hoping on November 7th that the voters of the Central District will give me their vote so I can finish what I started four years ago. Um, this group of nine counselors has done a remarkable job of moving the city forward where we were back in the, you know, when you look back at the 2017 council. Um, just, I hope that I'm, I'm number four on the ballot, so I hope on November 7th that I, that I have the privilege of getting one of your two votes. Thank you. All right, Joel Ferretra, thank you. Joyce? 
Okay, I want to uh, thank you to my fellow candidates for participating in tonight's forum and to MCTV for hosting this forum. I hope that I've earned one of your vote, your two votes as your next cent central district councilor. In closing, I have spoken about the years of my service to the city. I would like to leave you with a quote from Albert Einstein. Information is not knowledge. The only source of knowledge is experience. You need experience to gain wisdom. With that said, I have the experience to serve the Central District residents. I would like to continue with that service as I have done for many years. I respectfully ask for one of your votes on Tuesday, November 7th. I am number one on the ballot and I will serve you proud. And I wanna thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I look forward to serving you in the future. Thank you. All right, Joyce Campagnone, thank you so much. Candidates, Joel, Joyce, thanks for being here. Thanks for answering the questions. Uh, and thanks for, thanks for making your, your pitch to the voters and, uh, and, and your ideas heard. Uh, we wish you the best in the campaign and uh, look forward thank to you seeing for you again us. soon. Joyce, thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank you and good luck. Thank that was a great conversation. Thank you. That was a great conversation, wasn't it? Now it's your turn. Voting day is coming up. Tuesday, November 7th, polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you can't make it that day, that's okay. You've got two other ways. Uh, you can fill out an absentee ballot form at the city clerk's office, or you can participate in early voting. Now, that starts on Monday, October 30th, goes until that Thursday, November the 2nd, from 8 to 4.30, and also on that Friday, uh, November the 3rd, from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Last day to register to vote is on October 28th. Um, if you need information on where to vote, you can log on online to the City of Methuen's website. Uh, that's at methuen.gov, and we'll put up the address uh, on the screen for the City Clerk's Office, or you can contact them via phone at 978-983-8515. Now, uh, there are four places to vote in the city of Methuen. Uh, precincts 1, 2, 6, 10, and 14 will vote at the Timothy Grammar School on Pleasant View Street. Precincts 3, 7, 9, 12, and 13 will vote at the Tenney Grammar School. Precincts 4 and 5 at the Methuen Senior Center, Senior Activity Center on Lowell Street. And precincts 8 and 11 will vote at the Marsh Corner School on Pelham Street. If you are unsure of your precinct or you don't know what a precinct is, you can log on to wheredoivotema.com and find out more information. And you can watch your vote and follow the latest um, election information as well as candidate forums, candidate speeches and such right here on uh, Methuen Community Studios at methuentv.org. Before we close up, also we want to thank the staff and the volunteers of Methuen Community Studios for making this happen. Literally could not do it without you the lights would be dark so thanks so much and if you like creating television or creating media producing media we'd love to have you also visit our website at methuentv.org thanks again for joining us again we encourage you to vote on tuesday november 7th i'm seth graham it's been great being with you and we look forward to seeing you again soon take care